Hey everybody, welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name is Josh, thanks for joining me today. Um, usually on Fridays I spin the wheel, um, but I'm gonna reserve that for Monday. I owe you guys a couple of wheel spins because we're, today we're talking about obviously a more serious topic. We're back on the eight passenger stuff because I wanna cover it all. It just keeps getting darker and crazier. Today we're covering all the phone calls that Ruby made um, from prison. We're gonna go through them all and uh, geez. It's just crazy what that she thought she was kind of innocent in all this and just thought people were blowing it out of proportion. It's bananas. Okay, so let's talk about this. So if you're joining late and wondering what's going on, Ruby Frankie is going to be in jail for at least the next three years and hopefully for a whole lot more. After what we found out recently in the diaries and things like that, it's just mind blowing. We've been going over all of the things that were dropped by the state or the police or whatever the case may be. Uh, really important because we have gone over some of these calls, but it's in it's interesting to note that I think even to today, like she was just blowing smoke up people's ass in the court where she's saying all being all apologetic about it because she was adamantly like in support of what she was doing, even when she's making these calls. And she's begging people to see the truth. And when we read her journals, that was crazy. And one thing I do have to clarify is that the Julie that they were talking about in the documents, the J, the Julie, um, they, the thing, the reason why it confused me, because I know her sister's name is Julie. I know her daughter's name is Julie. But the thing that really confused me was when they didn't redact the name, did that mean the Julie, the adult Julie? Because they would redact the minor's names. So that's kind of where I got confused. And likely it was the minor Julie that was out there because Ruby was back and forth, obviously between three months. It's not like she didn't see other kids for three months. They were sometimes brought to the house, which leads me to believe that they likely knew what was going on and probably told someone like Sherry, like Chad, if they were in contact with them. And then I'm sure that Sherry probably told all the family what was going on. She probably reached out to Bonnie and Julie and all them and said, this is what's going on we need to help these kids right and we're also going to go over the pam botcher police video which is actually quite crazy so p police went there and the two daughters were there and they wouldn't speak to the police and pam and everybody is getting all upset about and no one really asks the questions really right they're just about like what's going on with ruby we trust ruby and that's a really important video too that was released in december way before this drop and so we will go over that as well because that's a big part because pam botcher plays a big role in all this and not arrested interesting right so um, I've loaded the calls here into Premiere Pro in my text-based editing. And so this is all the calls in sequence. The first call here is her talking with Kevin. Please see the truth. I know it's obscured. Please see the truth. I know it's obscured. Because can't even this is having a hard time hearing her, but I'll correct it where I can. Where I see the facts, I see the truth. And that's what I'm that's what I'm gathering. You know my heart. What are they charging you with? You know my heart. What are they charging with? You know my heart. So the heart that he knows up to this point is that you kicked him out of the house because Jody wanted you to? Because he wanted you to wear lingerie? That's that you know my heart. Your heart up to this point has been evil to him too, and I'm sure he sees that. Two degrees of second two charges of second degree felony for child abuse. Two charges of second degree felony. Probably. Kevin's like delay in the way he talks. Like, you only have a minute or two on this phone, and he's like, Ugh. it bothers me. Yes. Um, okay. Wow. That's very serious. I have. It's interesting. I had the prompting a little last month to read. Mr. Frankel. <laughs> <laughs> Funny jokes. I was reading him, and it was like, you, the worst part was not knowing the end. If you don't know who Victor Frankel is, he's a guy that wrote about the Holocaust, I'm pretty sure, um, and how that, and she's comparing herself to this guy, writing about, the, like, it's it's absolutely crazy. He said those who, he said he had a, a, an inmate that's man searched for me, he was a prisoner in World War II, and he said. World War II. The worst part and the greatest bringing of depression was not the lack of food and it wasn't the weather conditions. It was not knowing how long it would last. So I think I was prepared for this. How do you make yourself the victim in this? It's, it's mind blowing to me that she thinks she's the victim. You, you can't make it up. <laughs> I do feel strong and I feel calm. Oh, and you know what? They, they may 
Adults have a really hard time understanding that children can be full of evil. She's saying this to her husband about their children that they have together. I don't have a hard time understanding that children... I think she means to say they have a hard time understanding that children can be full of evil. And what that takes to fight it. So, she's telling you, she's admitting out here, it takes abuse to fight evil. That's what she's saying. You have to literally torture your children in order to fight the evil that's inside them. Children are innocent. Even by biblical standards, children are innocent, by the way. Just so you know. So... She thinks all this, and we went over her her diaries, and don't forget that she she said that she eliminated one of the the demons from R, right, and then just went back on that, and so well, the demon must be back now because he stole water of the hose. You've seen what it takes to fight evil. It's not the person you're fighting, and it can look and feel like something it's not. It's, you've been there, you know that. What do you mean? Is she trying to drag him in? You've been there, you know, you see that you have to fight the de- demons with with abuse of your children. And so, I don't know any adults who are going to see the truth. See, this is what she gets to say, because what else is she going to do, right? She's already telling you that there's no adults that can see the truth, and so she's just already being like, well, no one will understand, so it doesn't really matter. No, the truth we all saw with our eyes, okay, and the truth was that you hurt your children. You absolutely hurt them for three months straight. And you were in jail in it you were in jail for a long time now because of what you did. That's the only truth we need to see. So I'm calm about this and I just I'm calm about it. That you'll hang in there. Yeah, hang in there, buddy. You have one minute remaining for this call. I think I can call back, but Yeah, but just in case. Um I think I'm gonna call you back step up and fight for the children. Oh, now you are, eh? Now you're preparing to step up and fight for your children. Not the 13 months before this. Now you are. When the state steps in and your children, it's already way too late. Now you're prepared. This is why I hate this guy. And this is why he does not get a free pass in all this. Why wait until it was almost too late to then step in? Why didn't you step in at the beginning? They can take him. And they're going to there's going to be a hearing in the next couple of days here in Provo. I'm sorry, I just, I signaled to, 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 will you say that one more time? Yes, I'm prepared to step up and fight for the children. They've been taken into custody, they're in foster care, and there's going to be a hearing within the next you know, two or three days. It's also really, again, a really interesting, and I want to reiterate this, and I will time and time again. Why aren't the brothers and sisters who claim their innocence, why weren't they reached out to by the state to be like, can you take in your kin? Because in my experience, and I have very lengthy experience in this, when kids are taken into the system, here it's called the crown, there it's called the state, the first people they call are kin, family, to say, hey, can you help us? Can you take these kids in? It's the first people they call. Did they call all these people and ask them? And if so, why did they say no? What about Abby and Julie? And then two, all four were taken. Where did they go to get Abby and Julie? You know where they went. I don't know. They, they, while I was with them, they got Abby and they were looking for We have exceeded the allowable time for this call. Goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Okay. When... I saw how long this separation was lasting. I wanted to think of some ways that I could bring in money or make some money if if you didn't ever come back. Don't forget this part. If you didn't ever come back, if I was thinking about how long the separation, you made all of the rules about the separation. Kevin wasn't the one being like, I'm not coming back. You did it all. And so she's making it sound like he's making this call, which is crazy. So I was, that's when I asked if you would co-sign on the road if I found a house. And maybe I could Airbnb it or rent it out or I then Airbnb it or rent it out, that's wrong. I have numbers in my head and I think I could make something, but I don't want to be dumb. And I want to be very conservative. So I... I pulled the money and I have it in a bag. And All that tells me is that she pulled the money and had it in a bag because they were prepared to 
get on the run. That's all like that's all I'm hearing here. That's it. Because we know what they were about to do. And they said it, she explicitly said it in her books or in her journals that she's like taking them to this 500 acre property in Arizona so they can get kicked by a horse and run into a cactus and have natural laws and natural things happen to them. Okay. Yeah. Do the police have it? Well, I, I don't know what the police took. I don't know what the police have. Such a bag was at Jody's house? Bags at Jody's house? It's pe- people's money. I mean, that, that's not right. So if I'm correct in this, and I could be wrong, but the lawyer, Ruby's lawyer has the money and is likely holding on to it as like, okay, this is how I'm going to get paid with this money. But it's not all Ruby's money to pay for the lawyer fees. So Kevin's likely going to have to sue the lawyer to get his money back, right? Like, imagine just taking a bag of money and the lawyer's like, well, I'm taking this now. I do- is the, the law, like, cool with that? Well, you're not going to take the money, but when they have a search warrant, they have access to everything in the house. Sure. Yeah. I I have a feeling we're going to need that money. <laughs> Do you think? We might do. We might do. So, uh, I haven't been making big purchases. I've been very conservative. I think the biggest expense has been the kids schooling and. That they you just paid with cash. You're like I'm gonna roll up with a bag of cash for my kids' school. <laughs> Um, they have enough curriculum to get them for a couple years, so. Uh, um, He's like, okay. Ugh. Remember, this is the call where he doesn't ask about the kids at all. What did you do to our children? Not one time does that come out of his gob to ask her, did you honestly do this to our children? Like, what is what they're saying true? She, he doesn't even ask her. I just received a text and Ted Dawson out of the blue. Huh? Story, Ted Dawson, who I haven't heard from in years. What, he just texted you? Yeah, the okay. story's out. For no reason, she asked. So he said, Stormy sent me an article oh, and it gosh. just broke my heart. I just wanted you to know I'm thinking about you and if I can ever be a resource, we are always here. So you find out what happens to this guy's kids and you reach out and be like, if we can be a resource to you. <laughs> are we in the news? Yeah, you're in the it news. Sounds like, at least you're in the news. I don't know about me. I don't know what he's talking about. Did Ruby honestly think she was just going to be like, well, it'll just, we'll just lay low a little bit. And we'll come back and make videos. I'm wondering if they went to Sherry to like ask her questions. They're wondering if they went to Sherry to ask you questions. Mm-hmm. I don't know. These bookings are public. I, I know they are. And a couple of months ago, Business Insider was reaching out to me and I ignored their email, but um, I'm going dark. This is a witch. I'm not a BYU. I'm not at BYU anymore, so I don't know how they're going to find me. Yeah, maybe it was a both thing. This is a witch hunt. Ah, it's just a witch hunt, eh? The devil. The devil's to blame. The devil's I, after I, me. The devil's been after me for years. There it is. The, it, the devil's been after me for years. It's the devil's fault. And he's metal to us. So if the devil's after you, so <laughs> and you want us to believe that? So you, what, torture your children? Because the devil's after you? Doesn't make any sense. Doesn't make any damn sense. Do you have that with the detectives? I have not said a word until we have an attorney. Okay, well, you know that this phone call is being recorded. <laughs> you have one minute remaining for this call. Yes, that will come out. That will come out. What will come out? Okay. When we were, when we were driven to the jail, um, the detectives putting us in the car and Jody said, trust you. Do you trust her? So, to say, to not say anything. They're going to be in the hospital for three days. Ah, uh, and this part pisses me off. So weird. It's just not necessary. I'm like, trying to exaggerate this. Just not necessary, she says. Oh my gosh. And if you've seen the photos, because YouTube took it down, you go to my Instagram, it's on my Instagram. 
but they're trying to, it's like, it's kind of exaggerate. They're trying to exaggerate this. It's, it's insanity because when you actually see them and trigger warning, don't go look at them. If you don't have them stomach for them, it's, it's disgusting what she did to this child. Like I know both kids were hurt, but this one specifically R was hurt way more. Okay. And she's saying it's just exaggerated. Well, they didn't show me any pictures or anything of the way they described it. It was very serious. Why? So you, called, you had to put her in a, in a chair. It, it, was, it was horrible. It was torturous last night hearing the screaming and, and the banging and people. It's like, okay, that's... that's. I'm pretty sure it's a different call now. You had to put her in a, in a, in a chair. It, it, was, it was horrible. It was torturous last night hearing the screaming and... And the banging and people it's like okay that's that's you know upsetting but the most upsetting thing is that i am completely misunderstood uh. that is the most horrible feeling like my own family misunderstands me they misinterpret me and and poor jody, jody. They, they misinterpret her they misunderstand her oh my god to the very end this woman unbelievable they misinterpret what's to misinterpret we have your writings and we don't have the pen papers. I don't know where they are. I wonder if they just burned them. But if we, I'm sure if we had the pen papers, we would be even more upset. She puts her neck out on the line for people and then they get mad at her. I mean, it is just horrendous. It's horrendous. And you know what? Every Joseph Smith, every, every wonderful man of God. She's calling, jo she's calling Joseph Smith a wonderful man of God. And he's a chomo. Man of God has had to be misunderstood. That's right. I'm gonna get out of this. No, no you're not. No, I, maybe, maybe in ten days I'll get out of this. If I, you know, if the, the truth prevails. She thinks the truth is gonna prevail on her side of this after we've read and seen what we've seen. She honestly believes this. That's why she has no business being in public. She st she does not think that she's to blame for this. She thinks it's just being misunderstood. After writing what she wrote in her journal. She thinks it's just a misunderstanding. Right now, or, you know, who knows, like 20 years? I, I don't know. Let's I, hope it's longer than 20 years. I don't know how long. But I'm going to step out. I'm going to say I went through everything. I, I, I mean. God's children suffer. You mean you've seen it. Did you mean to say that you caused God's children to suffer? Is that what you meant to say? That you were the cause of it? You were the one that was doing the suffering to them, like you were hurting them, they were suffering because of everything you were doing. Is that what you meant to say? All the people I hear, my jail cellmates have been beautiful women, but they've been hurt. You know, they've been deceived into drugs. And <sighs> so I like how she's telling, like the people, the cellmates that she's in jail with, they've been hurt, they've been deceived into drugs. It's like not their fault, they're deceived into it. But her children weren't deceived into the perceived sin that she says they weren't deceived into it it's all their fault but the one in jail that's not their fault though like notice that like she doesn't blame the actual inmates who are in jail for being guilty of something but blames her doesn't say the same thing about her kids who who are bad quote unquote who did everything who were deceived and living in distortion they weren't they weren't deceived my heart just has so much compassion for them and i <clears throat> but no compassion for your children. I, you don't miss it. She has more compassion for the cellmates than she does for her own children. I have compassion for the cops and I have compassion for myself. Oh, do you have compassion for yourself? That's nice. Oh, you're so nice and to I, yourself. Do you have compassion for your kids? I don't hear anything there. And then to be told that I'm suicidal, I'm like, no, no, that's not true. Anyway, um, if you need to learn. Sherry, either Sherry or one of your siblings. Well, they're all in cahoots. See, Sherry or one of your siblings. That's why I sit here and think, what was it, Julie? Did Julie know? Did Bonnie know? Because Sherry knows. And if you don't think Sherry's going to tell Julie and Bonnie all that kind of stuff, you're wrong. And they're admitting it here that they're all in cahoots. One of your siblings and Sherry. That's why I've been sitting here thinking the whole time. They know. They know because they think they know too. They're in cahoots. Who says that about the situation? They're in cahoots against what? Against Ruby hurting her children? Well, I hope they're in cahoots. 
One means all of them, but yes, you're right. One means all of them. Get it. And you're hearing, I don't know if you've considered this, I don't know if it would be helpful, but you could have the house. <clears throat> From pr- Listen to the audacity of this asshole from prison being like you can have the house now and nye, 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 nye. oh thanks like what are you gonna like wh- thanks for your permission but clearly he needs it if, wow. if all the kids go to the house he's yeah. got room there and i i will i will gladly stay away <laughs> yeah you will <laughs> and, and let you guys be so i don't know if that's mm-hmm. helpful i'm just giving it to you if it is thank you uh, and- thanks it doesn't matter what you think that house should be sold, and all the proceeds should go to the children. Kevin shouldn't get a penny of it. In the discussions with with my attorney, that that's the only way that we're going to regain custody of the children. That's fine. Oh, yes, thing. There, he's he is thirty five years in this, and he said even if you are acquitted and. Um, are released, they will place legal restrictions on your access to the under 18 children. Forever. I Forever. Such. Did you figure it? I figured such. God told you. God told me. <sighs> oh my gosh, this woman. God told you. Did God tell you to? It, honestly, hear this, Mormons and everybody who believes in this kind of crap. If God told her to do this to her children and she believes it, other people will believe that stuff too. Okay? It's crazy. God told me when I was driving before I called you. I didn't have any information. I didn't know anything in the spirit. Hear this. Don't forget she just said this. God told me when I was driving before I called you. So she called him. Don't miss that. When did she call him? Because we know that she was arrested and then called from the... We have the first call here that was recorded. There's no other call. We have no other recording of a call. So she called him when this was going down. And that's why he showed it to the police. Remember, he wouldn't tell the police who called him. It was her. So she knew something was going on. She called him and she admits it right there and there. So don't miss that. He said, your children are going to be removed. And I just, I cried out loud. I'm like, no, I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not done. I'm not done. After all she did to those kids. And don't forget the last page of the diary. She was starting to physically, like she already physically abused them, but she was starting to hit them with belts, starting to get a little bit crazy, starting to escalate it before she got arrested. She, no, I'm not done. What else could you have done? What else was there? Right? We know what else there was. I'm not ready. And God told me I'm done. Yeah. And I, I just, oh. That's so, so stupid. I hate this person. <sighs> Satan's taken everything away from me. Yeah, Satan's fault. None of your choices. Just all Satan. Again, don't let Christians ever tell you, or Mormons, anybody, ever tell you that it was Satan who did it. Okay? You have free will on this planet to do what you want. Satan's not going to take stuff from you. Okay? Understand it. You are going to you are going to make choices, and your sin is, if you believe in this stuff, it's your sin and the judgment for your sin and the consequences of your sin is what's happening right now. If you believe what she believes, and not, and most people shouldn't, because she's crazy. That I love, and I'm a good woman. <laughs> no, you're not, silly bitch. I don't do naughty things. Uh, yeah, you did. We read it in your diary. You did absolutely naughty things. I don't do naughty things. Why she sound like she's a child saying this? I'm a really good girl. Oh my gosh. She honestly believes this is the craziest part. She believes she's a good person. Um, Ruby, I'm going to do everything that I can. Okay. To keep. His cadence is. Truth in our family. I I don't know what he's saying here. What do you mean, truth? Thank you. I'm. I am committed to our family. I'm committed to you. There it is. I'm committed to you. Are you? And then he files for divorce like three weeks later. Our marriage, no matter what happens. So that's a lie. I'm committed to you and our marriage, no matter what happens. That was a lie. And good. I mean, shouldn't be committed to someone who did debt to your children. But he's saying that right here. I'm committed to you no matter what happens. And that's untrue. Thank you. Thank you. I will be here to support you 
in any way that I can. Yeah. Again, have you heard anything about concern for the children whatsoever in this phone call at all? None? I'm a good girl. I'm not, I don't do naughty things. I'm committed to our marriage and you. Never once. What did you do to these children? Can you explain to me what you think you did and why they think you did some things? Can you can you tell me your side of it? Oh, well, thank you for stepping up. Oh, he's stepping up, is he? Where were you 13 months ago? I do need to go, but okay. All right. call me back when or if you need. When will you find out? How can I call you? When should I call so I find out what they say? I don't know how long this will go, but if you call this afternoon, I will know. This is a preliminary hearing, so there will be no. Okay. Well, it's hard to get a phone around here. I asked for a phone, and it took hours to get it, so I may, it may not be until later tonight. Okay. That's fine. Okay. All right. Good luck. I will be praying for you. Oh, thanks for praying for me. Bye. No, thanks. Don't pray for me. Goodbye. Bye. Okay. And it's for, uh, okay. Next call. Can you know you can tell me? Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear us? Yeah. This sounds like it might be her parents. Okay, that was... Okay. It's, uh, I'm 930. We're good. Okay. At night? At night? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So her parents are on their mission, by the way. If you didn't know this, they're on like a Mormon mission. After finding out what happened to their grandchildren and the absolute horror of it all, they stayed on their mission because God comes first. Right, and they're going to be like, God will reward us for completely forsaking our family. <laughs> These idiots. We're eight hours ahead. Eight hours ahead, they said. I'm, I'm glad you could call us back. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Grandma. Uh, I haven't used the phones very much. They're kind of hard to figure out. But, um, yeah, I think I figured out how to use I don't think this one will shut me off. I think the one I called, you know, the free call on this one will be paid for um, by my account. Kevin King, I don't put some money in it. So Kevin is giving this woman money and she probably has her, I don't know, they have these like, I think prisons have these in a, inward accounts or something like that where you can put money in it and they can buy things at the, the store, the commissary, I think it is. And hers is, you know, filled to the brim, likely from Kevin and the parents and brother and sister, because you know what? She needs things. She needs to buy a twin case because she deserves it. <laughs> but I, I was saying I, I can't say everything that I want to say. She can't say everything she wants to say. But, um, I really did feel it. I really did feel like they rescued, like a rescue. Like I, just felt. I don't know what she's saying there. I really did feel about something. So many angels around. So many angels. It was like a really, it was just really kind of surreal, kind of strange. Um, but I, I'm just thinking about, you know, President Wilson's talk, you know, things so short. I know he said in the past that about my Norfolk thinking, and, and he's, he's been a lot of, Context to you know how small this life is, and I'm just so grateful. President Wilson sounds like a Mormon dude. How many people, you know, the political bereavement, bereavement. Having, looking at, you know, I just I want to use this time. I want to use this time. And I know this time to, and use this time to change to repent. To change and repent. I I, we could put a man on the moon. We can't have better audio recordings of these frickin' prison phone calls. <sighs> Guide my thinking in jail, eh? Like, I don't know. Like, my attorneys are really good. Did you know my attorney is believe that God has a hand. Something happened. They cut something out. In the old ruby. The old ruby. God has a hand in the old ruby. You know, being uh, kind of set free or whatever you want to. This whole family talks like, gah, 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 gah. I can't deal with it. Call it. Um, that this is another, this must be another call because it doesn't sound like her dad. You know, thing being gone. Yeah, absolutely. 
This sounds like somebody at the church. Absolutely. I could not come out of this without without his grace, without his mercy, without his help. You're not coming out of this. This has been the strangest and the most miraculous intervention. See, she's just blowing smoke up people's ass by saying stuff like this. This is strange and miraculous. No, you're a douche. And you don't get to just be like, because she knows everything's being recorded. She knows it's going to be when it comes down to like, you know, she's probably been her lawyer's been saying, look, any call you make, make it sound like this. Do all these, say all these things so that people think that you've had this miraculous change of heart. And so like you're just, you're, you're possessed or Jody possessed you or whatever the case may be that she's just saying all this stuff because it's going to mitigate how long she spends in jail. And again, I'm telling you this, when it comes time for her to be up and for, for parole, we need to make our voice heard. We need to peacefully protest. It, it put everybody where they needed to be. It separated me from Jody, so I'm not hearing her. And I think just being gone and not hearing her has cleared a lot of things up for me. Oh, it's cleared it for you. That's nice. And it put the kids in a place where they're... I don't know what she's saying there, but they're blanking it. You have exceeded the allowable time for this call. Goodbye. <laughs> Um, did you, did you see that Jody pled guilty today? I did see that, yes. That now, I think she's talking to her sister here. I think it's Julie. I think this is Julie. Is that a relief for you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a relief. Yeah. It's a big relief. It's a yeah. big relief. Uh, there, there would have been positive the other way, too. Had she not pled guilty, there's enough evidence that she would have been could have been convicted for life hear what she just said there i didn't know that this that she said this if she would have not pled guilty there's enough evidence that she would have been convicted for life now there's enough evidence i think in your own writings to convict you for life ruby so what evidence she's admitting out loud that there is evidence she'd be convicted for life we know through Ruby's diaries that Ruby did most of the abusing. She didn't blame G. Joe in here a lot. I know G. Joe probably, it sounded like G. Joe was the, it sounded like Jody was the peacemaker in a lot of her diaries. That Jody would step in when the kids got out of hand, would take them for ice cream or take them for a talk, and then they would be different after they talked to her. Ruby was doing most of the abusing from her journals. I'm not saying that's the truth, I'm just saying from her journals. So what evidence is there out there that would convict her for life? That's really interesting that she said that. Don't miss it. But um, yeah. that would have been messy. It would have been really messy. And yeah, the kids would have. So. Listen to how calm she is after this. Um, so do you and her get the same outcome no matter what now? Or is there a chance that it would be different? That's a, that's a really. I'm telling you this. I don't have obviously a good relationship with most people in my family just because we, especially my sister, because I adopted her children, right? Um, but if, like, and the reason I adopted my children was for something, stuff, okay, it's bad. Um, anybody in my family did any of this, I would not stand by them, calling them all like, what's good? Yeah, let's do it. Let's put some money in your account. You like some Twinkies? Good question. That's one that I've asked Lamar. Um, no, we can still have different outcomes so and they did um, just took the easy everybody in this case just took the easy way out and it pisses me off like i understand like i guess you can accept a, a guilty plea but at the same time i don't know if they can force a hand to be like okay yeah guilty cool but we're also going to be just continuing this case i don't know it's crazy ellie asked a little bit about this um i wrote it out in a text ellie asked text, um to her but so the next thing that will happen is I will fill out, and she will fill out, a probation and, um, probation and there's another P, um, paperwork, and basically you go through your history and you tell them your history, which there's no history on me, there's nothing. Yeah, there's lots of history that you've documented that we can see. No criminal history, no mental health history, nothing. Um, and I'm also hiring um, a professional to do a mental health evaluation. Just yeah, that's nice. Uh, yeah, you're going to take all the money that's due to your children and spend it on your own just so you can mitigate your time in prison. Yeah, 
Still being an awesome mom, I see. To say she's she's good, like there's no mental health problems. You read her diary and tell me you don't think there's mental health problems. At all. And then that will go to my probationary board. Jody, she can lie on her paperwork, and she probably will. So will you. I don't think she's going to give them her history. But I think in the interview, it's going to be apparent that she's mentally ill. Listen, can you hear the projection? I believe her. But also, everything you're saying here about Jody Ruby is you too. Okay, are you serious? <laughs> Did you read your diaries? Um, and so that will affect how long someone, you know, because they're looking how how repentant are you? So she's already trying to figure out how to like get around the system, how to milk the system and how to like make it work for her. That's all she cares about right now. She's no repentance for her kid children. I've not heard one phone call, one message in any of these calls be like, I'm so sorry for what I did to my kids. Can you forgive me? I'm so sorry. Like, there's never, there's no repentance whatsoever. None, zero. And and she's talking to the closest people to her, her parents, her sister, her husband. And never once she's be like, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Can any of you forgive me? None. All she's worried about right now is Look, this is what they're looking for, and this is how I can mitigate this, and this is going to hire this professional. So they're looking for how repentant you are. They're looking for this and that, and so I'm going to be that for them. That's all she cares about. How much responsibility are you taking? How how are you aware? Who cares if you take responsibility? I think it matters that what you did, right? Okay, so you took responsibility, and the atrocities of what you did should come into play, too. Well, they took responsibility, so <laughs> you can leave jail now. What? Who cares if you take responsibility? That all that means is that you are guilty of some of the most heinous things you could ever do to a child. And that should keep you in jail for a long time. I don't care. If, like, the, the system is so silly. It's like, well, we're going to reward you for pleading guilty. You, you did the thing that we're accusing you of. And so here's a reward. Unbelievable. That what you've done is wrong. And she's not. She's. The only reason she pled is because she didn't want to. The only reason she pled. Do life. She knew I would testify. Again, what does Ruby know against Jody? And here's the thing. The only reason she pled is because she knew I would testify. So she knows some stuff that we don't like. This goes way deeper than even the, everything we're seeing here. This is crazy, everybody. So she knows that Ruby or she knows that Jody is. She has information that would put Jody in jail for life. And it's just like, I'm going to hold on to it, though. I'm just going to keep it here. <laughs> okay, cool. What? Um, the other thing is on my plea deal, when I come up for probation. Let's, the, that's so just a loop. Uh, you know, this is coming out. The, the prosecuting attorney can, um, will often, if they think that you're a danger to society, will talk to the probationary board and and. Or write him a letter saying, I think she needs to stay where she is. Maybe we need to talk to this person who is the prosecuting attorney, find their information, and send really, really respectful letters. Maybe there needs to be, a, you know, a go, a, not a GoFundMe, a, 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 a petition. And to be like, hey, thanks for prosecuting attorney, but we would love for you to write that letter to this board and make sure she stays in jail. Like, I'm not saying harass this person because they're doing their job, but honestly, reach out to this prosecuting attorney with letters and petitions and everything else and be like, please keep her in jail. From what we found out now, from the point of when she went to jail, we found out so much more. Please, please do your job. Do your due diligence. Keep her in jail until at least all of the kids are 18 and they can move on. Um, he's going to stay neutral and not write any letter when my probation comes up which is a really big deal why does she know that why does she know that the prosecuting attorney is going to stay neutral and why would he why would this person stay neutral after finding out what we know now again that's why we need to reach out to these prosecuting attorneys they work for the state they do and i think it's worth reaching out to them nicely peacefully and saying why would why is ruby saying that you're going to stay silent on that how does she know that? But for her, he's he's not going to stay neutral. Oh, but for Jody, he's not. Look, so when we read the journal entries about what you did, sounded like Jody didn't do any of it. To be honest, like doesn't sound you didn't write it in there unless we missed it all. But that's what it sounds like. 
So why would he stay neutral on you but not on Jody? After reading what we read. So we can come up to probation and I can get off on probation and she may not. Listen to this conversation. This is absolutely crazy. This prosecutor needs to know that in in interest of these children, they need this person needs to stay in prison forever. Kevin needs to write a letter. Keep this woman in prison forever. Any semblance of correction for him being a shitty dad could be done right here and be like, no, I want her nowhere near freedom. And what does probation look like? What does that entail? What does that entail? It can look like several different things. I think I'm still learning about this and I think it's, I never realized how complicated it is. I always thought you plead no, guilty and they no. tell you how long you're in. That's what we all thought. Yeah, there's a lot of terminology to know. Yeah, yeah, and... It's so funny, this woman's just talking to this, like, convicted felon right now and be like, and then doing videos on how to make sourdough. And, you know, half of the stuff that is said goes over my head and then I have to go, you know, I come back and I ask the girls here, I'm like, what does this mean? What does this mean? Um, but probation could look like going home. Going home where? Like, you could go home. Sometimes, mm -hmm. um... You know, it, it might look like going home with with restrictions, like you can go home, but you need to live with somebody who's responsible and you can't be around certain people. Like Remember this, okay? It could mean that you have to go live with somebody. And if one of her sisters takes her in, but didn't take the kids in, it's going to tell you everything you need to know about this family. They may say you could go home if your parents agree to house you, but you can't go home to where your kids are living. It could look like something like that. Or it could look like... Hopefully it looks like you stay in prison. Something where I have an ankle monitor. Or it could look like you can go home if you pay a $10,000 fine. Or maybe it could look like um, instead of serving the rest of your time, we'll give you some good time and you can go home in half the time. Listen to this conversation. This woman is absolutely guilty, has pled guilty, knows that she's wrong, and all she cares about is getting out of prison. Or so and remember when she was in front of the judge and she's like, I take responsibility and whatever you want, I'm glad you're giving me this punishment, but then she goes on to make a call and be like, How do I get out of here? That's the first thing that's she doesn't want to be held accountable. That's what I'm hearing. So I, I think that you probation, getting off on probation, I think looks like there's several different ways that that could happen. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. That's good to know. Yeah. Good to know, she says. And is that you asking you've already served full time then? Say, say that one more time. That's after you have served some time? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what that is going to be. I don't know if it's... One of the girls said... That it would be for me six months. Six months? Are we honestly, is she honestly saying that she can get in front of the parole board in six months? What? But I've also heard it could be four years. And some people serve several years before they ever see their probation board. So. Why? Why is it so convoluted like that? I'm, I'm really... You know what it is here? It's probably the Mormons. Mormons are going to step in. So, I mean, I could be in there four years. I could be in there 30. Like, I Good. really don't... I hope so. No. Yeah. And that will come in February? Mm-hmm. On February 20th. Okay, so this is before the sentencing. Okay, so we now know that she's going to be in there for a minimum of three and a half years because she has time served. So that's, I think, the minimum that the parole board can open this up and be like, let's take a look at this is, is at the end of the first four-year sentence. And then they're like, this is so silly. This, this is a law is so dumb. The judge can't be like, okay, you're going away for 30. The judge is like, well, we're going to see what the parole board says. Full of Mormons. Yeah. And um, the news that I saw so this actually is quite interesting because she's in here talking about what could be on, how she already can get out, what can happen before she stood in front of the judge and said, I will take my punishment, whatever you want. She was so she wasn't actually saying that she was already trying to figure out how she can get out of this. Uh, today, Jody's um, sentence hearing is also 
February 20th. So I'm going to make a request that we be transferred in two different vans. I don't think they're going to accommodate that. Mm. Would you like to take an Uber instead? Maybe stop at Jamba Juice? Uh, Okay, I see. Yeah, when we so when I went to the courthouse last week, what they do, and I and I they did this when they transported me to Utah County as well. They pull all the girls. There's only two housing here for girls. So there's not very many girls here. But there's okay. many for the men, and so they take the girls and they put them in a cell together in a holding cell to wait, and then they get all the men together and they put all the men in the cells, and then they start putting them the ankle bracelets and the chains and the Mm -hmm. everything on the men while you're so you're sitting in the cell with these women you're going to the court with for an hour and you're sitting with them and then they pull the girls out and they line you up and then they put the shackles on you and then they take the men out to the van the men's van and then they, they take the women out to the women's van and then you drive to the courthouse together and then okay they take How you out far they, away is your place from the courthouse there in St. George? Um, 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Oh. Okay. And, it's actually quite interesting, though, actually, how this all works. And um, and then you sit in a cell at the court. So if someone's hearing at 9, this is what happened to me. There was a girl that went with me, and her hearing was at 9, but mine wasn't until 11. So she went in, and she had, like, a five-minute hearing. And then we sat in the cell and talked for two hours until it was my turn. And then we oh. rode back together. So you, you pretty much spend several hours together, whoever's going to the court that day with you. Interesting. <laughs> Julie's like, yeah, this is so interesting. So that means on February 20th, it would be you and her going together. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well. When was the last thing you talked to her? Was it that day? Mm -hmm. It was when we were arrested. She's on the phone with her. There's a middens right there. We're we're always like, hey, where's she talking to Ruby? Of course she was talking to Ruby. That's who she was on the phone with before she probably spoke to her attorney. So what she probably did was call Ruby first. He's missing. R is missing. Okay, call an attorney right now. Yeah, I went. I left early in the morning to go to a dentist appointment with Julie. This woman's straight up going to a dentist appointment. Well, oh my gosh. We left at like three in the morning. Oh, here we go. Here it is. She calls me sometime in the morning. And and so I went back down. Notice she's conveniently leaving out all the crazy details. She just called me, so I just went back. When I got to the house, I mean, it, it looked like it looked like the movies. There was a red fire truck. There was a black van with tinted windows. There was there were two ambulances. There were twenty cop cars. And Julie's sitting here, being like, "Why? Why all that?" I mean, it was. It was. Did you just sit in your car? No, I I pulled up and found a spot to park. She lives on a cul-de-sac. I parked in the cul-de-sac and I walked up and the, the driveway was just full of cops and I just walked up to the cops and they said, they said, are you the mother? And I nodded my head and so they took me in and put me in the casita and I sat there the for casita. a couple hours. I just sat there and then um, like how cold she's describing all this. Like meanwhile, you're like there. These cops and people that are in the first responders at this scene have seen what they've seen, okay, and are like half of them are crying, half of them are like destroyed, and you're just like sitting in the casita all. Mm. They they were finishing finishing what looking through the house and stuff. I think and um, some of the guys were coming in and out with pizza, and so I think. I think Eve was still there because the ambulance car was there. Eating pizza with the police. And then, um, and then once, once the kids were taken in the ambulance cars. And Julie's sitting here just listening to all this and like, 
not asking like what happened to the kids to my niece and nephew what happened to them could you explain to me what did you do like none of these people can ask her then the detective came and patted me down and arrested me and then took me to the courthouse for questioning which i didn't and i'm glad i didn't say anything because lamar was really helpful like if you ever get arrested don't say anything <laughs> if you ever get arrested for abusing your kids don't say anything i just didn't say anything and she was like you find lamar did he was he just assigned to you coincidentally or did you um so she has a she has an attorney that she's used for connections and mm -hmm. and I called him and no one answered but then she called him and he said I only do like business law I don't do criminal law but here's a number of two people who do that I would highly recommend and so she Interesting. gave the two numbers and I got the number from Kevin I don't <laughs> Kevin Imagine standing there, you're like, okay, all this crap happens, you can see your kids in 13 months and be like, okay, but I'm going to go to bad for my wife. I don't know how the numbers got from, I don't, I don't know how, but um, that, he, Kevin said, here's your attorney and this is her attorney. And so, and that was the last time I talked to Kevin it was a couple of days after my arrest. But so I didn't see Jody at all when I went to the house to turn myself in. I didn't see her. Okay. And and I went and they took me to the courthouse and the detective was like, I've got all night, we can talk all night and I didn't say anything, I just said I I was an attorney. So uh, I could hear Kevin in the hallway talking and then he left and when they took me out of the room they took me outside and me and, and said all this time julie's just listening to all this and be like okay what happened <laughs> why were you arrested they didn't ask that question again they cuffed me again and then put me they told me you're under arrest for and then they told me two two of the charges and then they had me get in the in the patrol car and that's when i saw jody i saw jody was also in the patrol car and um she she had surgery on her shoulder and she couldn't put her hands behind her back so then they pulled her out and changed up the way they arrested her so she could drive with her hands in front of her I wouldn't have cared and then we had about a 40 minute 45 minute drive to the jail oh this is just a whole and bunch of friggin last time I spoke to her we were in the back Oh, the amount of freaking uncrazed the details that she's putting out here. I guess it's important, but damn. Um, we didn't. Oh, they drove together. Okay. A whole lot. Um, I mean, we talked all the time, but I don't remember really saying a whole lot. We sang a hum, like hummed a couple hymns. They were singing hymns in the back of the police car together. That's sweet. She. She was, she was still justifying the whole time. She was like, don't worry, don't worry. We'll have our day in court. And then... And Again, she's, just, she's completely blaming Jody for everything. And don't forget, Jody is to blame, but so are you, Ruby. She's putting all the blame elsewhere, except for herself. And when we were booked in, um, they put us in separate cells, and we've been in separate cells ever since. So... Mm -hmm. Do you hate talking about that kind of stuff? Does it trigger anything? Or do oh, you are you triggering? Or is it just... No, I don't. I, I think it's fine. No, I don't mind talking about it. Clearly. Okay. If she could, she'd make a YouTube video about it. It'd be good for me to talk about it. I don't know if you <laughs> will like no, talking I mean, about it. I'm just wondering if it triggered anything. But I'm doing okay mentally and said that's okay. Yeah. yeah, it's um I think the I think putting the pieces together and just seeing like she knew she was lying the whole time, like I lying about what? It 
You wrote it down! It's, and it's embarrassing, too, just, like, repeat it. It's like, oh, my gosh, how gullible was I? Oh, my gosh, how how much power I gave this person, and I didn't see it. But when I realized, so, so she had, her attorney's name is Doug, Terry, and mine's Lamar. And Doug, Terry, and Lamar, not spoke to Terry and my mama. <laughs> and Lamar, you know... Maybe a month into it, he's maybe not even that long. He's like, Jody denies everything. She denies having anything to do with this, and I was shocked. Well, we, when you read the diary, that's what I'm like. I'm like, Jody was obviously a part of it, but not like to the degree you were. That's what all I read, and that's what you wrote down. So tell me your take below. What do you think after when we read the diary? What did that sound like? I know Jody's obviously to blame, obviously, and she's did all this craziness and probably did more. And it sounds like Ruby has enough to put her away for life. So there's clearly a lot more than she was writing. But why write all that down and just take all the blame? I was like, what? And I'm I'm still telling Lamar like you know all all of the justifications and all of the you know I'm talking like a criminal. You are a criminal. I sound like a mad person. You are a mad and person. He was so patient with me. He was so patient with me. He would just look at me and it's like kind of dumbfounded, like like I said, two plus two is seven, and I really believed it, and he would just stare at me. I'm like, what am I saying that's so off? Yeah. You're saying that you're guilty and you did all these things. And, um, you said your kids are full of demons. That's crazy, <laughs> lady. But, but that's because I really believed it. But, but then when I heard that Jody was not talking like that, she was denying the whole thing, it told me she knew all along. It's like, it's like a little kid who doesn't know it's wrong to pee in their underwear. Why does she keep coming back to that? Why is it the biggest sin for her when a kid pees her pants? What is, what, does she pee her pants a lot? Like they don't know. They're not embarrassed by it. It's like, oh, oh, it's supposed to pee in the toilet. Oh, oh, oops. But you get a six-year-old. What the F? <laughs> you know, you get a six-year-old. Why is that funny? Six-year-old who knows they're supposed to pee in the toilet and they're peeing down the heater vent. They're going to try to hide it. What? And that's when I realized she knew she knew all along. Was this were they peeing down the vents because good for them? That's a little bit of payback. So when people go into the house to buy it, they're gonna be like, it smells like pee in here. Good. And she's hiding it. And then I was like, crap, what Maybe they're peeing down the vents there because you had them chained to your bed when they were sleeping. What am I stuck? And that's when things kind of started turning. I was like, she was she's not been honest. I didn't I didn't know she wasn't honest. I didn't know she would lie. And it's like, what else has she been lying about? Where else are, have I been deceived? I, I've been deceived. <laughs> and not, and if you discovered that you were deceived this whole time, that Joey's lying about all that, wouldn't that like make you break down into like just a heap of a nothing of a human because of what she made you do to your kids? She has no remorse here. Okay, because you felt, oh my gosh, I was deceived by Jody, and look what I did to my poor kid. Oh, I'm a terrible. You know, it's none of that. It's just like, oh, she's lying to me. None. There's no, re there's no regard for what she did to her children. What was that? Oh no, I was just yeah, agreeing. Yeah, agreeing yeah. with you. Yeah, 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 and it was just like the the little string that started pulling apart the fabric. I'm <laughs> like, oh my gosh. What have I done? Like, what? I'm just <laughs> What have I done? You know? I can talk about it now. Yeah, go ahead. Lamar was just very, very kind that day that we met with him. It was very kind. Oh, like miraculous. Yeah, yeah. He and his wife. What? What do you mean with Lamar's wife? Mm -hmm. Lamar was a Mormon. Yeah, he had he had a way of like he he didn't beat around the bush. Like there were some times he would say things that were shocking to me. Like he Like you're guilty, Ruby, you wrote it down in this journal. He, he would like repeat what I said, but he would say it in a different tone so I could hear myself. And he's like, Is that really what you think? And I'm like Do you really think that your kid is possessed by demons? Oh. And he 
Because up to that point, she's like, no, I did not. You don't know. My kid's dead. He stole the water from the hose. Okay. Okay. You have one minute remaining for this call. Do you, do you want to end the call or do you want me to call you back? How do you want to? Um, we can end for today. And yeah. Um, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Oh. Okay. Okay. No. I'm on comfort. I'll talk to you again. So. Yeah. I'm just really glad that he's got his, that he's there to kind of help. Yeah, you glad that he's there to help mm-hmm. her through it? That's nice. Yeah. Well, the first night I was in the jail, I, I just felt really strongly like I'm sending you help. What do you help mean? is coming. S- oh, God sending Ruby help. Okay. Yeah. Is that? Is and that I just yeah. felt like that was that was Lamar, and he's been very, very helpful. Thanks, Lamar. Thanks for all your help for this person who did that to children. Imagine having to be a lawyer and standing up for somebody who admits guilt about what they did to their children like this. Like, how do you sleep at night? How do you sleep at night and try to help them? Try to help someone like that? I'm grateful for him. Uh, all we've all been praying for this Oh, you've been praying um, for her release? Mm-hmm. That I'd you, be praying, God, please keep her locked away forever. Please. It, it's she deserves it. Help, I'm glad it's finally here. Me too. Me too. I'll take it. Like, I, I hate this. Oh, you hate that. this? <laughs> what do your kids feel? Of course. Yeah. Um, it was good to talk to you. You have exceeded the allowance. It's good to talk to you, she says. So those are the calls from Ruby's thing. Very, very important to go over those, I think. Uh, lots of stuff in there. One of the things that really stood out to me was she's saying that she's got enough on Jody to put her away for life. What does that mean? Because in the journals, again, I'll bring it back. It sounded like Ruby did everything and then Jody was just there, likely feeding her these ideas. Okay, let's see that. But like, not the one doing it. I don't know. Go. I, if you get a chance to read those journals, go read those journals and let me know what you think. This is crazy. So, and just like the, the, just the, the nonchalant, just let's have a little convo on the phone. Nobody asking her if it's true what she did to her children. No one's asking about the kids. No one, hey, have you heard about the kids? Are you going to take the kids in? Are you, would it be possible? You know, have they contacted you about, are you going to take the kids? Nobody talks about the kids, the actual victims and all this. They, she thinks she's the victim and they're all like treat her like that too. Oh yeah, you're the victim. That's all I'm seeing here. That's the craziest part about this case. When your family does something like that to the children in your family, because those kids are your blood too. Here's what you do. You tell them to fuck off, okay? Never speak to them ever again. That's what you do. They don't deserve it. They don't deserve you to throw money into their commissary account, nothing like that. Commissary, whatever you want to call it. They don't deserve it, okay? They don't deserve you to be like, I miss you, I love you, and we're praying for you. You don't know. Are you praying for someone to do that to their children? Are you? Oh, Mormons. Anyway, everybody, take a deep breath. There's so much here. There's so much here to go over. And there's like so much probably that they haven't even dropped yet, by the way. So it's just going to keep getting crazier and crazier. Don't watch Family Vlogs, everybody. Don't watch Julie DeRue. Don't watch Bonnie Holine. Don't watch the Griffiths. After hearing her just be all like, eh, me, me, and then I'm going to go make some sourdough and put it on YouTube. That's crazy to me. Why are these kids not living with kin? That's also another question you have to ask. I mean, maybe they're better off, to be honest with you. So, anyway, but thanks for being here for these conversations. I appreciate you. Happy Friday, and I will see you when I see you.